In this video, we're going to go over how to communicate with your users in the actions that they do using Django Contrib messages. This is similar to other frameworks where they have flash messages that last for an extra request so that whenever a user does something, you can inform them of what just happened, whether it was success, whether it was a fail, or whether you just want to tell them something. You can see where this is useful if you'll go in and we'll try to log in on our site. And when we try to log in, we fail and nothing happens. We don't see any visual feedback. Now you can normally accomplish this through form validation, but sometimes you have error messages that don't work in other cases. So you would need to give them a message anyway. Plus when we do successfully logged in, log in, yes, the page changes, but sometimes it's good to go ahead and give a little extra information as well. So to do that again, we're gonna use our Django Contrib Messages framework that has a built-in middleware component, a template context processing component, and a storage backend component. The defaults are all sane and all really good, and I don't rec really recommend changing them unless you have a need. So let's actually go ahead and take a look at how to use our messages so that we can inform our users that we've logged in or have unsuccessfully logged in. To do so, we need to go open up our account views and import our messages doing Django Contrib import messages. And then we need to go down to our login view and in our form valid, we're just going to add a message. To do that, we're gonna do messages.addMessage. We're gonna give it our current request since messages are based around requests. We're gonna give it our constant of messages.success saying this is a success message. And then we're going to do logged in successfully to show our users, hey, that we've actually logged in successfully. What you're looking at here is we're adding a message to our message system in our back end. And then in our template, it's going to use our template context processor. It's going to bring the messages into our templates without any extra work for us to go through. The messages.success is one of five types of messages that we can send. We can send debug, info, warning, or success and error. In this case, we're using success. And in the next one, we're gonna use an error. So for us to tell our users that they are unsuccessful in logging in, we need to override our form invalid. And then we can do messages.error, pass it in our request and our message. Note there's a difference between using error here and the success constant above. The way above is kind of the long way of doing it. There are shortcuts that we can use for messages.error. We could also do messages.success. These are great for your five standard types of messages, but if you go in and add your own message types, which you can do, then you would need to do the add message way above. So with that said and done, let's go ahead and look at our templates. To open up our login view template, you'll see we're including account slash messages.jinja, which is a, an easy way to do messages across multiple files because you just include the same code everywhere. If we look in that file, you'll see that we're doing an if messages that says, hey, are there any messages? If not, then just don't do anything. If there are, let's go ahead and iterate through them in our for message in messages. Now this third line here looks a lot more complicated than it really is. We're just doing it this way so that we can get the look and feel of how it works with Bootstrap. So ignore most of it and jump to the very end. You'll see we have a message that we're writing out to the user in our div. So to see this actually work in action, let's go ahead and run our server and open it up in our browser. If we go into our login page and we try to log in and we're unsuccessful, we get username or password is invalid please try again. If we try to log in again, except this time we are successful, we go to our dashboard, it says logged in successfully. And then if we refresh the page, we see the message disappears because it was only based on their on that request. One of the differences between Django messages and messages in other frameworks is the Django messages will actually stick around until they're shown. So if you get an error or something along the way, and or you, you browse to a different page and that message hasn't been shown, it could randomly show up in another location. So it's generally a good idea to make sure that whenever you use a message, make sure you're going to a page that actually can display it so you don't get it in funny locations. So with all that said and done, we're actually successfully using messages. Unfortunately, it's a little bit of a verbose way of doing it, especially since we're using class-based views. And obviously class-based views can make things a little bit easier. 
In Django, it actually comes with a success message make sin, but it doesn't also come with an invalid message make sin so that we can show things on error. In that case, we're going to use Django braces form message make sin, and you'll just import it from braces uh, views form message make sin. To use it, we're going to go to our login view and in inherit from form messages mix in. And then we're going to use form valid message equals our message, form invalid message equals our message. So that way, when we successfully log in, it's going to say logged in successfully. And when there's and when our form is invalid, it's going to say username or password invalid. Please try again. And then finally, we can just remove all the code that we just added a minute ago. So we're back to our original compact view that we were using. This helps us keep our skinny views going as so that we can keep things tight and compact and we know what's going on at a quick glance. So with that in place, let's go ahead and look at it in our browser. If we'll go in and log in and we're unsuccessful, we get username try again. And if we're successful, we get our message. And again, it lasts for a single request. It's very simple to start using messages. I highly recommend it. And it's going to make using our application that we're building for our product easier, not only for us, but for our users, because it adds that extra level of communication for our users to know what is going on. Please join us for the next video in our building a product series where, we, where we're going to start working on our data models so that we know what data to bring over from Strava and we can do that successfully.